Hi, today we're going to talk about the applications of information processing theory. Um, so we'll really think about what and how you could use IPT in your classroom. So let's get started. Let's see. So if we Okay, right, so we're getting questions today are how can we measure schema or knowledge and what interventions um, could help us facilitate this increase in knowledge. So remember information processing theory starts with that external information and our internal system where we get input to our sensory registers that have um, a huge amount of input. But we only perceive and attend, we only we perceive a lot and we attend to some of that. We hold a little bit in our working memory for a short amount of time. Um, we can keep it longer through rehearsal. Um, but there's interference and decay over time, but we can encode it into our long-term memory, which is relatively permanent. Um, but there's also interference and decay over time. If we want to get it back out of our long-term memory, we retrieve it from our working memory where it goes to our response generator and an output, and it's all controlled by our metacognition and our executive control processes that happen in our frontal lobe of our brain. Okay, so implications for teaching. For perception, that's our bottoms up processing, recognizing features and assigning meaning. So teach learners to recognize important features of things, um, such as thinking about a textbook um, and helping them recognize main ideas, helping them recognize bold words um, for important vocabulary words, helping them recognize figures and how to analyze those visual inputs. Um, there's a lot to, to even just reading that um, helps us assign meaning to what that looks like um, helping and helping learners to, to do that effectively, right? Um, there's also top-down processing, so thinking about recognizing prototypes and allowing them for rapid recognition. So this is a prototypical um, example of a narrative or of a persuasive essay or of um, a, a problem that you should solve with a division or multiplication um, and helping them um, examine um, those as examples of that domain. Um, for a, attention and helping students to attend um, using signals to add extra emphasis and helping learners recognize what those symbols are and making the purpose of that lesson or that assignment really clear um, to help students attend to what that purpose is. Um, incorporating variety and curiosity and surprise to help learners stay attended to something, um, including classroom demos, discrepant events, charts and pictures, those kinds of things help students stay attentive and not get bored. Um, asking questions to engage learners that are problems and are thought provoking, not just declarative types of type um, questions. Um, and using students' names um, helps engage learners and call attention to themselves. Um, and then thinking about um, elaboration versus rehearsal. So um, rehearsals when you just repeat something over and over again and that type of practice and how that is one way to help students remember something, but um, thinking about how elaboration or connecting what they know to something else might be even a more powerful way to help students um, engage and keep something in their long-term memory. Okay, assessment. So how do we assess um, under information processing theory? Um, schema, so how they structure things. This is a lot like constructivism. So we might be asking those essay type questions, asking students to think about how they've organized what they've thought. Um, and then thinking about when we ask questions, um, are we asking them about declarative knowledge? That might be things like multiple choice questions, short answer or matching procedural questions, um, having them do something, which could again, it might be multiple choice, but even short answer or essay questions might be better. And then conditionally asking, making sure that they know when to, to do which type of thing, which might be more like a word problem. Um, and then thinking about how we can help them recall what they know. So what types of interventions might be appropriate if I wanted to, let's say, measure or um, intervene using information processing theory. So interventions that help students perceive um, perception, so things like that gestalt, um, pattern recognition type of ideas, um, or attention. How do I help students attend to something more? How do I make something more engaging for them? 
Um, or do I have something to help them rehearse more? So lots of practice with something. How do I help them encode it or make it more meaningful, maybe with that enrichment um, or enhancement elaboration type of thing? How do I help them retrieve it from their long-term memory? Um, metacognitive monitoring and control, helping them think about the ways in which they do those things um, would also be another intervention for information processing theory. So again, all of those are ways to think about and apply information processing theory to your classroom or to your future practice. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to, feel to email me um, or call me. I'm happy to meet with you either on the phone, through email or chat, um, or in person in my office. Um, I look forward to seeing you. Bye.